everybody. I'm Mario Bobino, and welcome to a KDOL TV Sports special presentation, Sports Forum with the Oakland Raiders, as well as our Oakland Athletic League football players. That's what we have in our studios tonight. I'll be moderating today's event. Alongside will be helping me will be Christina Ruiz. Now, on that note there, I'm going to introduce the Raider players that we have in attendance tonight, and then we'll have each player from the OAL school represent themselves and let you know what position they play and what year they are in school. So first off, we have sitting to uh, my right is Usama Young out of Kent State in his fifth year, no, excuse me, in his seventh year out of Kent State University, free safety for the Raiders, number 26. Then we have sitting next to him, Rashad Jennings out of Liberty University in his fifth year, number 26, 27, the running back for the Oakland Raiders. And then sitting next to him, Jerron Master, even though sometimes I think I'm saying your name wrong, but he's in his fourth year out of the university, out of Kansas State University, and he is number 85, the tight end for the Oakland Raiders. And then sitting next to him is an OAL alum, Kevin Parker, who was a recruiting assistant coach with the Cal Berkeley Bears. I thought it'd be good to have Kevin come down and speak with these student athletes, so therefore they'll know exactly what they'll need to do if they would like to get into college. So these are gonna be our panel for today. And these players are going to be asking these guys questions about nutrition, health, and education. So on that note there, we're going to start off and let the players introduce themselves. So won't you start with your side first, Christina? One, two. Hi, my name is Henry Hong. I play for Oakland Tech. I play offensive guard, class of 15. My name is Kenyon Jackson. I play wide receiver and defensive back, class of 2015. My name is Jai Davis. play receiver and kick return, class of 2014. Okay, now we're going to have McClendon introduce themselves. My name is Kelton Runnels. I play guard and tackle in class of 2015. My name is LeVance Warren. I'm a junior at McClendon's High School, and I play running back. My name is Raquel Menifee. I'm a junior at McClendon's High School, and I play D tackle and right guard. Um, hey, my name is Marquise, 12th grade. Uh, I play nose. Yeah. My name is Tom Tran. I go to Oakland High, senior, and I play defensive end and linebacker. My name is Sua Tungaval, middle linebacker, senior out of Fremont High. My name is Tyshawn Gaines. I'm a junior, and I play receiver, kick returner, and corner. My name is Ronald Ragland. I'm a sophomore. I play receiver, quarterback, and kick return, punt return. <coughs> Hi, my name is Kevin Parker. I'm a sophomore and I play uh, wide receiver. Hi, my name is Armand Shine. Uh, I'm a junior at Skyline and I play running back. Jacques Westine, middle linebacker, fullback, and I'm a junior. Zarek Davis, Skyline High School, class 2014, playing middle linebacker and right tackle. I'm a junior at Skyline High School, and I play defensive tackle. All right, Castlemont. I'm a senior at Castlemont High School. I'm a corner, class of 2014. All right, good job. So on that note there, Christina, why don't you go and ask the players the first question. First question I would like all of you to answer, starting from Usama. In high school, was there a specific struggle or hurdle that you remember going through, and how did you overcome it? Uh, I would say it was several hurdles, several struggles, several uh, several things that I had to deal with. And uh, just to name one, I say uh, my grandparents, my grandmother passing. She uh, she meant a lot to me. She uh, she was very instrumental to my upbringing. And uh, once she passed away, it kind of hurt. But I understood that I got a lot of life to live, and I got to make the most out of it. And in high school. You know, I, not to say I was taking things for granted, but I, uh, I kind of just, you know, went through the motions for a little bit. But then that was kind of a wake up call for me. Uh, myself, I mean, that's a that's a loaded question. And I think all of us, if we really had time, we probably would be here all day. Um, but myself, I, one, the guy you're looking at right now is definitely not the guy that um, was in high school. 
I'm a complete changed man. And some of the struggles I had in high school, you know, I was uh, overweight, I was fat, chubby, I had asthma, I had glasses. I, I was just that, completely not who you're looking at right now. And I also had a .6 GPA average at one point in time. And um, so it was, it was a lot I had to overcome. And, you know, if it wasn't really for my brother coming in my life, uh, kind of kicking me in the rear end and staring me the right way, not really changing who I am, but just kind of giving me a focal point um, of how to accomplish what I wanted, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be here. So I, I really had to turn around and pay attention to my grades. I really had to pay attention um, to my nutrition. And, and, and I, I really had to learn uh, to respect authority and I also uh, had to take a lot of ownership. Uh, for me, like they said, you know, there's a lot of struggles that you know we've all come across. Um, one of them that might not seem like a big deal to you guys or anybody really. My dad was my high school coach, and he also taught at the school. So not only is my dad at home, but my dad's there every day, and he's in my life and can see what I'm doing. Um, I decided, you know, hey, I'm gonna skip, you know, lunch and go and get lunch. You know, I can do whatever I want. You know, not gonna get in trouble. My dad's the coach. Well, I had a college team coming to watch me at practice, and my dad, I got caught, and my dad decided, hey, you know, you're not practicing. You know, he was just as upset and mad, and I finally realized, like, hey, I can't really just do whatever I feel like doing. You know, so that's one specific incident that kind of woke me up, like, hey, don't, don't do something that's not worth it. You know, you're missing an opportunity to have a school come you know, offer you the chance to come play for free, you know, and get a free education, and you're blowing it by, for what, going to Taco Bell? It's not even good for you anyway. So, uh, yeah, that was one specific moment I always remember. Uh, for myself, uh, I think mine was just growing up in a tough neighborhood, you know, and waking up and trying to make good choices and not to uh, do what my friends were doing. Uh, and then also, I had a learning disability coming out of high school, and uh, that, was a, that was a tough one I had to overcome, so that would be that would be mine. So do any of you players got a question for any Raider players? Don't be shy. Okay, right here, Fremont. Stand up. All right, so how hard was it for you getting recruited? Let's go with Gerard. All right, uh, for me, I don't know if they still have Rivals.com for you guys. Do they still have that going on these days? I had no stars, uh, was nowhere to be found. I'm from Oregon. Um, didn't go to any camps really. I was playing quarterback and D end, but I wanted to play tight end. So it was like, I, you know, I had no film or anything. Um, was getting recruited by a lot of Ivy League schools because I had good grades. And they're like, hey, you know, this guy is a big dude. He can come play something for us, you know. But really it was my grades getting me recruited. It had nothing to do with football. It was because I had, you know, a 3.8. They're looking at me, you know, I got, I had Harvard and Princeton wanting to know like, hey, can you come play out here? Well, Kansas, a, co a new coach got hired at Kansas State, and he hired a guy out of Dartmouth, which is another Ivy League school, and he asked him, hey, do you know about any tight ends? And he's like, yeah, we know about this guy in Oregon. Asked for a film and sent him a film. They turned out a day later and said, hey, do you want to come to the Big 12 and play football? So that was a great opportunity that, you know, had something to do with how I could play on the field, but had the majority of what I did in the classroom. So when you're thinking like, hey, you know, class might not, you know, be related to what I'm doing football-wise, you got to have those grades to even play in college. So, uh, yeah, that was doesn't how I got recruited, I guess. Yeah, I got just kind of interesting story, too. Uh, in high school, I rode the bench. Um, you know, I keep telling you all this stuff. It's like, how in the world does this dude make it here? He, in high school, I rode the bench. And it, the Tennessee, um, yeah, Tennessee Volunteers had came to see um, our starting running back. And I was like ninth on the depth chart. Um, and one by one, the starting, starting running back got hurt. The guy that the scout came to see. The second string running back got hurt. The third string running back got hurt. And everybody else was dead tired. So they had no choice but to put me in. Um, and I got an opportunity to play. I ended up touching the ball seven times, had two touchdowns, um, ran for 100 yards. And, it, it's, and, and I rolled the bench. And on defense, defense end got hurt. Another guy got hurt. I had to play defense. I scored two touchdowns on defense. And so the scout came up to me afterwards. He said, look, I, I did not come to see you play. I didn't know your name. I know nothing about you. 
Um, but we like you. And he asked me, he said, how are your grades? And I had to tell him the truth. And, that, and that's a part of why I had to turn things around. But just goes to show y'all that a quote that I keep with me, when opportunity presents itself, it's too late to prepare for it. And that's something I hold now in the National Football League. And, um, you know, just I just want to say that story to let you know that somebody's always going to watch you when you have no idea you're being watched. And um, that was that's an example where I had no idea who was there. Um, I just took took the most out of my opportunity. I just want to know, was it ever a plan like you playing football where you wanted to quit? I, uh, I, I, I could have chose so many things to talk about with adversity, and uh, that's one of them. Another thing that one of one of the bouts of adversity that I had to fight through was injuries. Every one of y'all have probably been playing football for a number of years, or it might be your first year. But uh, I had broken my left shoulder, my humerus, fractured my growth plate in uh, in my freshman year. And I thought I was done. Everyone was like, ah, you're good. You just got a stinger. I was like, nah, this ain't no stinger. This is for real. And I ended up going, this was my second second game. And I uh, fro fractured that, so I was out for the year. And they said my left arm wouldn't grow anymore. Look at them now. They, they about <laughs> even. So that was good. My 10th uh, my grade year, I had knee surgery. They had to put a, uh, put a pump in my knee and all types of stuff. Out for the year again. In my junior year, I'm playing football, and I, I cramp up in the first game, then I pull my hamstring, and I'm just like, dude, well, come on, man. It's, it's always something. Maybe I ain't meant for this. Maybe this isn't meant for me. And I, uh, I just kept fighting because I loved it so much. I loved it. All of my brothers played football. All of my, all of my friends were playing football. I loved competing. I knew that I was good at it, but I could not get healthy. But I continued to work. I continued to to keep my faith in God. And I, I found that strength to, to play. And I mean, I don't look back anymore. You know, I, of course you still get banged up, you still get injured, but that's part of the game. And that's something that I've accepted, but it's so many things that I could have probably done to avoid that. But yeah, it was some times when I was just like, man, ah, this pain, this, this hurts. And you, you wake up in the morning and you really are like, is, am I really, am I really meant for this? Am I built for this? But it's, I love it. Okay, um, I have a test question for uh, Kevin Parker. By you being at Cal, a lot of guys don't know how important academics are or what type of courses they need to start taking or what courses they should take. Can you let these student athletes know what type of courses they need to take to prepare themselves to get into a university? <clears throat> Uh, all your core classes, uh, your English, your, your maths, all your sciences, that is something guys, you guys definitely have to stay on top of your counselors and stay on top of your, uh, your parents and stay on track, keep that on track for you guys because year in and year out, man, being at Cal for 12 years now, we always have guys that we want to, you know, offer that scholarship to, but they are short a unit or two, uh, from not even getting their foreign languages done, uh, you know, they're making it harder and harder for you young men to get to, get to college. I know when back when I played back in the day, it was, you know, 700 score. Now at Cal, we're looking for a 1,400 on the SAT. So that's just about, you know, a little shy of 450 on each subject, the the verbal, the math, and the, uh, the writing now. Uh, so you definitely just have to stay on top of getting your core classes to do the best you can do. Uh, try to stay around a 3.0. If you hover around a 3.0, and with a, a nice test score, you'd be able to make it to any college. Uh, if your eyes are set for, you know, Cal, Stanford, the Ivory Leagues, you know, those are different uh, uh, tiers of schools. But all schools are just looking for a well-rounded uh, individual that they can count on because once they put that money into you, they want to uh, get their money back and their worth out of you. So make sure you stay, take your care of your core class and you should be fine. been the little guy like the you know yeah. I've been a little guy <laughs> I'm the youngest I'm the youngest of five boys so I was a little guy getting pushed around all the time and I think that's what uh made me really really want to play football because I got to hit people back and, and hit people and not get in trouble for it you know and take some of that anger out that my bigger brothers were were uh taking out on me 
So I, I was able to get out on the field and, and release some of that tension. And, you know, whether, whether it was school that was bringing on the stresses, if it was my parents, if it was at home, anything, I knew that I could have that outlet on the football field. And, you know, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't the smallest on the field, but at home I was, and it was a, uh, it was a constant fight that I, I always lost at home, but I would win it once I got on the field. So mm -hmm. it's a little different. You might be talking about the little guy on the field, but hey, it translates, man. Yeah. And, and I, for, I was a little guy, I'm, I got two older brothers, and they both played in the league, and they're, uh, they're 10 and 13 years older than me. So when I was growing up, you know, they, they grown men. So they, they took it out on me. They didn't hold anything back at all. And um, so I got picked on. But again, like he was saying, it's, uh, it, I appreciate it now. I hated it then. Uh, but, you know, they, taught, they taught me how to tunnel it and, 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 and take it out on the field and where I needed to. So, I, I, but no, I, I was, like I said, I was a fat kid, so I went little. But in the sense of the underdog little, in the sense of being younger and, you know, having the older brothers, I was a little guy. Okay, we have a question over here. Stand up. Um, throughout your careers, how did you remain humble? Why don't you ask that, Jerron? Uh, I mean, that was, like I said, one other thing. I, was, I say I was blessed to have my dad for growing up because he preached a team atmosphere and that it's not about one individual's accolades. Uh, I wanted to play tight end my whole life. We didn't have a quarterback, so I played quarterback. And even though he was the coach, he decided he still wanted to run the ball. I couldn't even get my own dad to call pass plays for me to throw the ball. So, you know, we were winning games, but it wasn't like I was throwing for 400 yards, 300 yards, five TDs every week. You know, I might have had 10 passes, but of those 10, you know, I expect to complete 10 or whatever. If I do have a big game, I'm going to compliment my old line or someone else out there working because it's never, you know, football is a team game. You didn't do everything on your own. You know what I mean? You you can't. You're not breaking 11 tackles every single play to win the game. You're not tackling the guy with the ball and another team every single time. Like someone else is doing something to help you out, so you need to appreciate their efforts too, and you know bring them up because that might make them stronger, make them more confident, make them even better than they were before. So I was looked at it, you know, from a team perspective. Try to stay humble. Does that answer your question? I had to touch on that because uh, a lot of people see us and they automatically think we got big heads, NFL, NBA, whatever. You're professional, you, you're full of yourself. A lot of people see that and that's the, that's the automatic stereotype. And knowing these guys and knowing several other of my teammates and guys that I play against, I know that that's truly false. A lot of us have went through a struggle and we remember where we came from. I mean, yeah, of course, you got some guys that aren't humble, but out of the, the guys that I remain close to, those are the guys that know where they came from. They knew they, they came out of out of areas where maybe they weren't. They their parents didn't have money. They didn't have food to eat every every day. They, they their boys was hustling on the street. The brothers were hustling on the street to get it. Their father had two three jobs, and now we get to support our families through playing this game. I can't ask for much more. So I constantly look back at where I came from and understand that. It could be, it could, it could be bad. <laughs> it could be, it could be a lot worse, and that keeps me humble. That keeps me hungry. And I know these guys next to me, they, 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 they didn't have a silver spoon. You hear their stories, man. And that's where I think, wow, they, man, I didn't know that about Shaw. I didn't know he was a fat boy. I look at him now, and I'm like, this dude, what? <laughs> Stay in the gym. Stay in the weight room. Always doing something extra. But that, that's what keeps me humble, man. At the same time, I want to say, like, I would never confuse that with someone on the field not being confident. You know, on the field, you don't got to be yelling and, you know, trying to show off. But you know in your head, you know, no disrespect to this guy, but I'm about to destroy him. You know, you have your own confidence when you go out there on the field. But you always remember, hey, at one time I wasn't the best. At one time, you know, I had to work for it. And there's always someone else out there working for it. You know, they might not be in Oakland. They could be across the country. But they're trying to get that same scholarship you are. So remember that someone else is working for that same thing you're looking for. Yes, um, have growing in, growing in a certain neighborhood or with a certain crowd has affected uh, the way you like play? I say uh, having a lot of a lot of my boys who who were hustling, you know, and were on the streets, were 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 maybe not doing the drugs, but were selling. 
I wanted those new shoes. <laughs> I wanted the new clothes. I wanted the fret. I wanted. I wanted all that. But I had some older brothers that pushed me in the right direction. I saw some of the mistakes that they made, and some of my boys had made. I, I grew up around guys that that got that had gotten shot, gotten paralyzed, who lived that life, and I saw that it wasn't for me, and that kind of fueled my fire to, you know, hey, if I don't get this scholarship, I don't see, I don't see me getting this edu this education. I don't, my parents weren't going to afford for me to go to school, you know, and that just made me stay away from all the stuff that they were getting into. Yeah, I'm not going to say I was an angel. I hung around them at times, and then I look back at it and I say, wow, say I got pulled over, or say we got pulled over when he had that gun in the back seat, where would I be right now? I wouldn't be playing playing for the Raiders. You know, I wouldn't be up here on this panel talking to y'all. So I look back at it and say, man, some of those choices that I made that I look past, I got to pass on those thoughts to y'all and say, hey, make sure you're hanging around the right, the right people because you got to be a leader. And if you are around that crowd that is doing all that stuff that you know is wrong, y'all in high school, y'all know right from wrong. You all, you're around that crowd. It's only going. It's only going to lead to your demise. And you want to. You want to surround yourself with positive people, and you know, try and be around people that are going to uplift you or push you to get better. And that's what I, I find myself doing now. We got a question over here. I like for Kevin Parker to ad lib on the same answer because Kevin he had a scholarship. He played at the University of Oregon, and he grew up in a real tough neighborhood uh, in the Dubs, in mm -hmm. Oakland, California, 23rd Avenue. And so let them know your experience with the tough neighborhood you grew up in, Kevin. Yeah. My neighborhood was really tough, uh, you know, drugs being sold, women being disrespected. Uh, but my thing, we had a strong mother. My mother uh, raised me and my twin brother. And picking back what he said, I had to make a really tough choice. I'm in the car with my twin brother who I would kill for, would have killed for, uh, to go rob uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And what I thought about was my mom. Nobody's in the car talking about, man, what if we get caught? I was only, you know, two twins are totally different. One is outgoing, one is, you know, the, the logical guy. And that was me. And I was like, man, what if we get caught? Man, that's going to kill my mom. That's going to kill moms. And I was like, man, I wanted to go do it. But I kept thinking about my mom. You know, my mom is our heart. And I'm like, man, let me out the car. And uh, they pulled over, let me out. And I fought myself to this day that I didn't stop my brother because he would have listened to me, me being a big brother by two minutes. But... I told him when I got out the car, man, bring me some money back. And uh, he, he, they did the robbery, got away with it for a little bit, and he brought me some money back. But he ended up getting caught, and his life got derailed. You know, he had a tougher road than I had. So that was my one big thing, man, where, you know, you might even have to tell your loved one, your sibling, that you can't get down with him, you know, because you have you got to be focused and you got to think about the outcome of things. So. Uh, you know, all you guys from the streets of Oakland is really tough, and you guys probably come from tough neighborhoods too. There's just so much out there. Just be able to stand on your own two feet because it's your life to live to make that tough choice, man. And I had to make that choice, and that helped me get to Oregon and, and where I'm at now to the, today. So, uh, and, and it hurt me, you know, that I had to do that to my own twin brother. But, you know, you have to make that tough choice sometimes. So, even to a good friend, a best friend, a brother, a twin brother is even closer than a regular brother, you know. So. I had to make that tough choice. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, Castleman, I got a question. Um, have y'all ever had to worry about being recruited to play ball anywhere, which four year or JC? Like whether to go to junior yeah. college or four year college, <coughs> just or being recruited. Three, I got like you. Being recruited. Yeah. yeah, that um, you know, I, I went to a small. I transferred. Um, as I told y'all before, I had the point six GPA average. That ain't gonna cut it. I transferred to a private school. Um, and I got a chance to get a fresh start. And, you know, it was a small school. It was a graduating class of, I think, 90, 90 kids. Um, you know, we, 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 didn't, we wasn't publicized. It wasn't the big triple A, you know, uh, 4A, 5A school. Um, I think we were probably negative A. Like, it's just a small school um, in the country, middle of nowhere in comparison to here. And uh, won't nobody traveling to watch us play. Um, and so, yeah, that was difficult kind of getting noticed. Uh, but one thing I was blessed to be able to attend was camps. You know, my, my school traveled to different camps and every time my coach would let us know, hey, we're gonna go to this little seven on seven razzle dazzle camp. 
you know, here's a here's another camp at this college or here's another wherever there was a camp, I was there trying to showcase what kind of talent I had, trying to see what other kind of competition I was against, um, trying to get my name out there in some way, shape, or form. I was the guy knocking on my coach's door, um, letting him know how much I wanted to go to the next level and what could I do, what could I do, what could I do, what could I do, what could I do. Um, it's okay to be uh, annoying in a, in, a, in a respectful way to, your, to, to those who are looking after you. You know, let them know how bad you want it. Um, and you'll be surprised how much people go over and beyond. But as far as getting recognized, I struggle just because I went to a small school. But the advice I would give you, um, you know, to get recognized is to play hard. <laughs> That's taken for granted. And, and, you know, I, I, even now, like I, I try, I, I don't take for granted, and that comes as part of my humility. I don't take for granted every time I get to step out on the field. Every time I'm in a huddle and I get to look at my teammates' eyes. Every time we break the huddle and I get to get either catch the ball or watch them, I don't take it for granted because I'm no different from you. You know, I didn't skip you guys' age. I didn't skip you guys' school. I didn't skip anything y'all are going through. I didn't skip having to say no. I didn't skip getting in trouble. I didn't skip none of this. I'm, I'm y'all. You know, this is my story. I'm no different. And so I can't take it for granted because I could, the same air I breathe is the same air that you guys breathe. You cut me, I'm going to bleed red just like you. I'm no different. And so because of that, you know, it, it always brings me back to humility. But getting back to your question of how to get noticed is play hard, man. Leave it all out on the tape. Your tape is your resume. That's all you have to go by. During high school, what motivated you not to quit? Sharon? Uh, motivated me not to quit. You know, I just wanted to be the best at everything. And like Rashad just mentioned, you know, the tape is your resume. So when someone turns on the film and sees, you know, what you're doing right then, that's all they have to go off of. You know, not all the extra workouts you're doing in the summer, because I did those, you guys do those. You know, not all the times you're doing an extra sprint, an extra rep. You know, all the stuff that goes into the one moment and you know as Rashad said that as well you know you got to be able to you know seize the opportunity when it's there you've already done the preparation you can't just expect to do it and not have prepared for it all that preparation is coming into that one opportunity so uh on film I want to put my best foot forward at all times I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and I want you know every time I expect to win you know I don't ever expect to lose you know he could be faster he could be stronger he could be bigger but I want to win my own battle, just say, you know, I can't be beat, you know, I'm the best one out here, you know, in my head, and uh, I, I just like to win, so, I mean, that's my answer to your question. You saw my answer as well? To go in, uh, my motivation, it was, it was somewhat self, but then I had an older brother who I looked up to, like, like I mean, he, he was all world in my eyes, and I knew he was all world in high school, but he never got his grades. He never, he used to skip classes, whether it was game day, whether it was practice, he had skipped school. He had like a 1.0 GPA. He found a way to get the grades once football season came or found a way to, you know, talk to the, talk to the coaches and they'll let him play or talk to somebody who's going to get him on the field. He found a way to make it happen. But as soon as high school ended or his senior year, I remember going to a game. As junior year, I remember going to a game. I was still in uh, middle school, and I said, hold on, why is my brother on the sideline right now? And he, uh, he told me after the game that he didn't have the grades. He wasn't able to play. And I'm just like, dude, come on, how you ain't 2.0, that's it? So knowing how smart he was and how athletic he was, wide receiver, catching passes, I feel like he should have had the, you know how people say you got malts? I felt like he should have had it. It should have been you got young because that's how I looked at my, my brother. He was the man. This dude couldn't get the grades, and it was so it, – it, it fueled me because I knew I didn't want that waste, wasted talent myself. And I constantly said to myself, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm not going to let the grades hold me back. I'm going to make sure that I hit the books, I hit the weight room, everything else was secondary. And that's what I – that was his motto, but he really didn't live it. And – that fueled me to work even harder to get to where I am and get to college. And even in college, it was like, I got I to gotta make it happen because he missed out on this opportunity. 
And to this day, I talk to him. He talks to me and he says, you know what? I realized that I didn't really love it. I like playing football, but I didn't really love it. If I loved it, I would have took care of all that other stuff. You know, I would have took care of the schoolwork. I would have made sure to talk to my teachers after I was leaving out of the class to act like I was interested, you know, because you build those bridges. He touched on that. You build those bridges, you talk to these folks, they're going to they're look out for you. And, you know, he didn't, he didn't go at the coach and talk to the coach, but if he loved it, he would have. And that's what he said to me just recently. And that's, that, was my, that was one of my motivations. I said, man, Big Bro's supposed to be in the league right now, but since he's not, I'll go ahead and hold it down for him. <laughs> well, Shai, I would like to be like uh, uh, Yeah, man, it's, it's so many things that will motivate you. I mean, I could be here all day long, but, you know, one kind of thing, uh, one little nugget kind of to put in your brain is, you know, my dad used to, he used to drink heavily uh, when I was a kid. And I used to watch how he would respond, and I used to watch how he would act around the house, and I used to watch him slur over his words, and I hated it. Like, I hated it. I couldn't stand it. And, um, you know, I remember, I grew up, I, I always, I, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be that guy. And I remember having a heart to heart with my dad, and, you know, he, he ended up quitting years later, but that moment he had told me that, Basically, you will see, because I used to ask, why are you always drinking? Why are you always drinking? Why don't you be a better dad? You know, I, I, I'm a kid. I don't really know what it is to be a dad. I'm just mad. And um, he had told me, you, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. And I never understood what that meant. meant. And um, I said, Dad, I won't be successful, and I'm never going to drink. And I remember telling him that. And so that kind of, like, part of it was because I wanted to prove my dad wrong is what motivated me. I didn't care what I did. I was going to be successful in something. I had to figure out something. Um, and that's kind of part of that transfer to school, everything. But, you know, I'm proud to say now I'm 28 years old. I've never drank alcohol a day in my life. And, you know, I've never smoked a day in my life. You know, I, 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 I'm known as that dork, that geek, that health nut, that what. But, if, you know, it, it was something that motivated me. And, and I, I challenge you guys to find out what really angers you. What's something you don't want to be called? What's something you want to see changed? What's something you want your kids to see? And I guarantee you that'll motivate you when you're tired to remember, why am I doing this? That's, a, that's so important to figure out why. Okay, questions, Oakland High. Um, how hard is it to play in the NFL? But you're right. <laughs> I mean, you're going against a bunch of other people that are, you know, paid to knock you out too, you know. I'm trying to block a guy across from me that's getting paid to, you know, demolish me. Um, but I always remember when I step out on the field on Sunday, you know, this is how I kind of relax myself because I get a little worked up going into the game, you know, just hyped up. Um, when I was in your guys' shoes, when I was going out on Saturdays at 1 o'clock to, you know, play games, you know, in the daytime. And just what it was like, you know, to play as a kid and, you know, just not, you know, have a worry and go let it loose. You know, this is what I do. I've been training the whole offseason. I've been training all week. I've been watching film. I've been studying. I've been preparing. I know what I'm going to see. I know what he's going to do. I know what they're going to do. I know what to expect. And I know what I can do, and I know how I can do it to beat them and be successful. So when it all boils down to it, when it's time to snap the ball and do what I do, it's really not that difficult because I've already done it all week long. I know I'm going to do it. And I've already, you know, visualized it and seen it in my head, like, what's going to happen on this block? How's this play going to work out? Granted, sometimes it doesn't work out, but you got to go to the next play and forget that last one. So. Christina has a question. So social media is a big deal now in society. How do you know how much to hold back and how much to put yourself out there? Uh, I, try, I try to be somewhat, like he said, that guy that I – I try to be that guy opposite of what I don't want to be. I don't want to be that guy that's telling everybody all my business, telling everybody every little thing I'm doing. Hey, y'all, I'm going to get this. Hey, y'all, I'm going to do this. Hey, I'm about to wash my car. I'm about to... It's one of those things where I understand as professional athletes, everyone kind of looks at you and they want to be a part of what you're doing, but they don't want to be a part of everything. They want to hear about some of the things that you're getting into, some of the positive things that I'm doing, that's what I make sure to put in there. I want to I wanna tell people that, hey, I play professional football, but 
I also like to read. I also like to play video games. I also like to go out and talk to youth and tell them, hey, you can do this. You can accomplish your goals. And so I, I try and be as positive as possible. I'm not a complainer on social networks. I'm not that guy that's going to uh, talk about what I hate and somebody messed up my order at a restaurant or these people getting on my nerves might cut me off. I'm going, I'm going to talk about the positive aspects of life because you get enough negative in TV and the reality shows and all that. So I'm going to be that guy that's positive and talking about the good things that's going on around. So that's how I do it. I'm sure my guys got a, another method to their madness too, but it's all over and you want to keep your fans, you want to keep your fans as close as possible. I have another question. Um, I remember you saying your dad was your coach. So I wanted to know, like, did you ever feel like your dad pushed you more than your other teammates around you at practice? Yeah. Um, do we have any quarterbacks in the room? Well, we got one. Yeah. So I mean, as quarterback, you you know you're you set the whole play up. You know what I mean? You're in charge of putting the team in the best play, giving them the best opportunity to win, because um, you get the ball every play. Um, my dad, when we come home, you know, I say I learned the importance of watching film because when I came home, I couldn't watch whatever shows I want, because my dad was watching film, so he kind of taught me, like, hey, you know, look for this. This is what their DBs like to do. This is what they like to do here. I look, look to throw the ball here. So I learned in high school kind of how to film study at a young age, um, but he definitely pushed me harder, because he could say whatever he wanted to me at practice. Not like I can go home and tell my parents, hey, coach is being mean. I'm not going to go tell my mom, like, hey, dad's being mean at practice. Like, you know, that's just dad getting on his son, and I appreciate him every day for it, because like Rashad said, you got to play hard. And my, if I was not playing hard, my dad was on my, you know, he's on me about it. So, you know, I got cleaned up one time running down the backside at DN, just kind of jogging, watching the ball go and got lit up. And he said, you know what, you deserve that. And now you're getting to know to play hard. So I'd say it was a boost to have him. Okay, we got about five minutes left. We got a question over there from Skyline. At what grade did you start taking steps to being recruited? That, that start, that starts, that starts the first time you're on the field. Um, it's not really, I look at it more so I, I'm not taking steps to be recruited. Um, I'm taking steps for them to recruit me. And so you just got to go about your business as, as a professional. Um, you really have to learn that. And, you know, I, obviously I'm saying it from a professional level. Um, and so kind of some things that you can chew on and take back home is, you know, make sure that you're not the last one to leave the practice field. Make sure you're not the last, uh, oh, excuse me, the first one. Make sure you're not the first one to leave the practice field. Make sure you're not the first one to leave the weight room. You know, it's always something you can work on. You know, n none of us are perfect. Um, so the, how you can work on re getting recruited is, 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 is at home, you know. As soon as you get, when you get back home, man, even when you're playing, this is, all jokes aside, when I play a video game, when I play Madden, I'm looking at coverages. I'm, I'm trying to study how I'm going to win. Like, so that way when I'm on the field, I'm actually still in the game. Like, I'm always finding ways to get better, get better, get better, get better, so I am being recruited. But like I said before, talk to your coaches um, and make sure that your grades are right because regardless of how good you are, regardless of how talented you are, you ain't going nowhere without no grades. I mean, just straight up. I mean, you're going to be that guy that was, hey, remember old Johnny down the road that was so good, but he didn't have the grades. And, you know, kind of like he was saying before, it's, it's, if you don't have your grades, you really don't even have a car to drive yet. And uh, that's, that's, the, that's one of the most important things. But outwork, outwork your opponent. Question? Uh, how's the transition from high school to college? Sama? Uh, I I say the the transition was was major, but it was something that that I, I adjusted to pretty well. I went to a uh, to a predominantly black school and in high school, predominantly black high school. Then I went out to Kent State. It was a lot different. It was a lot different. The the it was it was more diverse. I had to I had to learn how to talk to different ethnicities. Everybody doesn't communicate the same way I was communicating with my boys at in Largo and in DC and around the way I could use my slang. What's up, young, yeah, all that. I had to understand that it was time to be a little bit more professional. And I adapted to that. That was one of the things that, you know, that 
that came with that transition. It wasn't just football. But then also, it was the classes. It was a little different where everyone didn't tell me, all right, hey, you got to go here. You got to do this. You got to do this homework. Don't forget about this. A reminder. The reminders weren't coming in the same way that I thought they were. And people told me it, but I didn't really expect it until. I didn't really know it was going to be like that. So once I got there and transitioned and I saw that everyone wasn't going to spoon feed me all the answers and I was just like, okay, I got to do this. I got to get back on the grind, similar to what I was in high school, but it's going to be a little bit, a little bit more. Because football is now, it's not just that game that we're playing. These guys are getting paid well. These coaches are getting pay, paid <laughs> big money. These athletic directors are getting paid big money. A lot of money is going into this. It's a business now. And I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to step up my game, not only on the football field, but in the classroom too. And it was my first C I had gotten once I got to college. I got a C and out. I, I mean, I had always been a scholar. So I was like, what? A C? Come on, man. And that's when I really started going to classes. And I really, not going to classes, but going to my teachers and, hey, uh, excuse me, Dr. Blah, 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 I need some help with this. And it really, it really paid big dividends, man. It paid, it, it was big time because they said, wow, this guy plays football and he's really, really in the schoolwork. They, they thought a lot, a lot, not to say they didn't think highly of me at first, but they thought a lot more highly of me once they saw that I, I was about my books, and again, we're gonna harp to y'all. Those books are something serious, and it gets it gets even more serious once you get to college. You gotta you gotta make sure that whether your career ends today, tomorrow, whenever, you got you got this taken care of. You hold on to all that knowledge, man. You hold on to all that knowledge because football isn't forever, and it's not for everybody. So make sure to take as much as you can from the class. You get as much as you can from from your, your teachers now, and once you get to college, God willing, your professors, you get as much from them, because once you're done with football, you're gonna have to step into that real world, and all of us are preparing for that as we play professional ball. We're all ready for that next transition. And one, one big thing he touched on, that they both touched on, that I don't feel like they're emphasizing, is he mentioned effort on the field. You know, play hard, play, to your, play as hard as you can play. Like, when it's over with, you better be tired. Another thing he mentioned is effort in the classroom. Go to your teacher, seek that extra help, and as far as you know, people you're running with, find the people that make you better. Find the people that have the same goals as you. Find the people that want that same success you're looking for, because that's going to bring you up. You know, good coaches surround themselves with even better coaches. That's why those assistant coaches go on to be head coaches and so forth. So, effort in the classroom and effort on the field, you know, is really going to pay dividends for you in life in general. Okay, we got to just about wrap up. We got to have one more question from Oakland High. What makes you the most angry on the field, on your own team, on the other team, and as a recruiter? Why don't one, two, three? So as a recruiter, and then losing a kid that you put all your time into, and they chose to go somewhere, choose to go somewhere else. Uh, that kind of hurts because you, you know, it's like your girl. You know, you've been whining and dining, and they choose to go somewhere else. So that kind of hurts at the end. Uh, I would say for uh, for me being on the recruiting side. Now he for, says, uh, as your teammates, and then you'll go on the field. Oh, as a... Because like, you asked me questions, right? Yeah. And what was the... Like, uh, uh, one was about recruiting. Yeah, like what makes you the most mad on the field with your own teammates and with the your opponent? So you'll go opponents, you'll go with your own teammates. With my own teammates? Uh, I, I get a little upset if someone's not prepared because I know everyone has the ability to succeed. Like, we all have the ability to go out and win, you know, win every battle. It's just a matter of, you know, is, is he prepared for this opportunity? Is he prepared for this moment? Uh, I get a little frustrated if someone's not prepared because we're all working together, all 11 guys, and if one guy, you know, isn't ready, then that play isn't going to work out for us. So that can make me a little upset, I guess. Rashad? Uh, it makes me upset when they win. I don't like losing. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much it. Okay, well, come on in. We're about to conclude our show. I'd like to thank all the Raider players, as well as the student athletes from the OAL school, my lovely co-host, Christina. Can you players please assist me with uh, appreciating the Raiders coming down and sharing that beautiful knowledge with you guys? Yeah. So on that note, for the staff and crew from KDOL, Christina, I'm Mario Bobino. So long, everybody. <laughs>